everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I thought we would do another floor time extravaganza with the guinea pigs and also to talk more generally about free roaming guinea pigs if this is something you're new to. So as you can see the space is all set up and ready for the herd to start exploring. This is our living room which the guinea pigs get to free roam in occasionally. For the most part though they do go upstairs in the same room where their cage is and I will talk a bit later about the benefits of different size spaces because bigger is not not always better. I've saved showing Yumi set up this space because it's what I normally do. There are some waterproof fleece liners in key areas and then I've scattered a load of tunnels and fun stuff to encourage them to explore in between. And a little bit different from normal, I have left this end of the room open <laughs> that goes through to the dining room. So we're going to see as a bit of an experiment whether any of the piggies are brave enough to venture in there and how far they actually get. Will they get all the way to the kitchen? I don't no. Are you ready to come downstairs, piggies? Yes? Okay, we're gonna try and get as many of you as possible in the hay room, then I can carry you all down together. Whoa, there we go. Ready to explore. Right, before you do too much wandering around, we've just got to go and get Roxy. She wanted to be transported in a bed. I'm not sure why, but we do appear to have some sort of fascination with the bed over there, the blue one. Where are we going? So what you might find happens with floor time, especially when your piggies are more used to it, is that you have an explorer <laughs> or more, one or more explorers that tend to lead the way. My explorers are Nacho, who is our boar. Here he is. And he is being followed by Phoebe, the ginger one. She is our second explorer. And the others are much more, not really timid, but kind of wary when it comes to floor time and they will prefer to do following rather than leader. That is a great piggy train. And they're off. They're off over there into the sun puddle. They didn't take to it so quickly last time we did this. They were a bit wary, but there we go. What a piggy train. Oh, yay. That is so sweet. Don't get left behind, Callie. So all the piggies are being quite adventurous, which is really nice to see. And one of the benefits of floor time is, of course, that it gives our guinea pigs the opportunity to exercise in a space that is usually far larger than their cage. Because let's face it, guinea pig cages available to buy pre-made online or in pet shops are, in general, not the best size. They are basically too small for most guinea pigs, especially when you have more than two, to be able to like run a big lap and get some decent exercise. And once you get into a routine with it, it's not too difficult either. I had to stop that there because we have some <laughs> intrepid piggies underneath the dining room table, which is where they've never been before. They are bravely venturing where no pig has gone before. <laughs> and they're out again. And that was purely led by Phoebe with Callie following her thinking, where on earth are we going? Okay, where was I? Setting up a routine for floor time. So the most important things are obviously deciding where is a suitable location to do it and how you're going to set it up and make it safe for your guinea pigs. Because in general, free roaming time should be a supervised thing that you do with your guinea pigs. They aren't necessarily destructive, but unless you're really thorough in blocking off areas where you don't want them to get into, then they could end up doing something that you don't want them to or they might chew something, for example, although in general they aren't as bad for chewing things as, say, rabbits might be. So your chosen location might be the same room where their cage is, it might be in an upstairs bedroom or downstairs in a more social living area, which is totally fine and you'll find that your guinea pigs will adapt to noises going on around them. It might just take them a little longer in the beginning, but things like people talking, walking around, TV, radio on in the background, 
background, they will eventually get used to it and ignore those sounds. So often part of setting up the right area is having the right tools at hand. And as you've seen here, I use CNC cage grids. They work quite well. They're really flexible. I can set them up to block off pretty much any areas where I don't want the guinea pigs to get to. But you could also use something like a playpen, although I try and use it like stretched out to block off an area rather than making a circle pen with it because they tend to be quite small. However, in the beginning, small could be better. So if you've got relatively new young guinea pigs that are not used to being out in the open, even if there's hideys and things for them to get into, then it can be quite overwhelming for them to be in a huge space like this. My guinea pigs are fairly confident and used to it, but if I was starting out with younger piggies that were say under a year old, then I would start from using a much smaller pen. I'd probably sit in with them, you know, we're thinking like two meter square size and then increase it gradually from there. And it does really depend on their personalities as well. Some piggies are just more natural explorers and take to it easier, whilst other piggies are home pigs and they prefer their cage. Phoebe's off. Phoebe is independent piggy. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where's everyone gone, buddy? Where's everyone gone? They've all disappeared. So this is a prime example of guinea pigs doing things that you don't necessarily want them to do during free roaming time. The girls have gone into here. These Ikea poofs, which I don't believe Ikea do anymore, which is a good thing for guinea pigs. <laughs> they attract guinea pigs to sit underneath them. They are not flat all in the bottom. It's like one big cave under there. And once they get under there, they just love it. But it's not good because wherever they hang out for long enough, then we're going to get poops and possibly peas on the carpet, which is never a good thing. Nacho's waiting for you. So once you've chosen where you want to do free roaming time with your guinea pigs and you've blocked off areas where you don't want them to get into, the next thing you're probably thinking about is what about the carpet? In my experience, if you provide places for them to go and use waterproof fleece liners and stop them from going into dark corners and dark things where they can hide under it and they've got nothing uh, like a waterproof liner under them, then you can avoid all peas on the carpet. Poos, however, However, might happen accidentally, but they are not as big of a deal because they are basically dry. They're just easy to sweep up. So unless you have, say, a brand new carpet and you want to keep it super, super clean all the time, then the occasional poop on the carpet is not too much of a worry. Just being honest, that's the way things are when you own guinea pigs. And if you find that your guinea pigs have peed on the carpet, then it's probably because they found somewhere that they like and it could just be a corner or it could be a bit of an accident say if you are using a litter tray or a hay room like this and they sort of pee over the edge by accident which is why I use these waterproof liners. So I know it's a concern for some people and it might put some people off but try it as long as you put these measures in place you will really find that accidents on the carpet are not too much of a thing to worry about at all and at least give it a go with your piggies and if you find it's really not working with your piggies then you can just shrink the area down a bit and use waterproof fleece liners covering the entire area they've got to explore and avoiding accidents on the carpet basically dictates what is best to put in their floor time enclosure so avoid putting dark hides and tunnels where they've not got a pad underneath and I always provide their hay room which for me is just an underbed storage box that I use in their cage and I just take the same one downstairs and pop it out here for them. You'll see that I also bring their food and water dish because when I do floor time it's usually over a fair few hours and I find that they will want to go and have some pellets and a bit of water in that time as well. Someone is squeaking from under here. Callie, you have to come out. Yeah, you're not going to get any lettuce if you stay under there. 
So this is another thing you can try with your piggies during floor time is to either hand feed them or put out some veggies around their enclosure, make it a bit of a challenge for them to encourage them to explore. Are you all wondering what's going to happen with this lettuce? <laughs> Hide some bits and pieces around. You've joined us, haven't you? At last. You're just coming to me, aren't you? You need to go and find it for yourself. What is this? Go on. There we go. Yay. I've done some really hard ones in the cubby holes. I think it's a bit high for you. What about if we put this here? Nacho. After all that fun exploring, I think the piggies have had enough. <laughs> They're probably ready to go back. And that is one of the things about guinea pigs. They do naturally love their cage, which is why it's important that their cage is of a decent size and it has enough things in for them to share nicely if there are two or more piggies, which there should always be because they're very social animals. So for a decent cage, you're looking for at least 10 and a half square feet, which is often a lot bigger than what you can get from standard cage manufacturers. So I will have an updated video on the best indoor cages coming out very soon and I'm researching for this video so I would love for you to let me know whether you have a DIY setup. If you have a pre-made one then how big is it? Did you manage to find something suitable for your piggies or have you got a kind of hybrid like a CNC cage where it's a bit DIY but maybe you've bought it from one of the big retailers? I'd love to know so do comment below and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thank you so much for being here and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!